It's another beautiful Monday morning here at the shop, and this is now like week number three on what should have been probably a one-week suspension install. Granted, I don't get a chance to work on this like all day, so it's not really a three-week job, but um, we have this 2000 Stepside Silverado, which is a no side right now because the bed is way down yonder. Um, and we're working on the back. We completed a atomic fabrication coilover setup up front some time ago and last week I got started on the rear suspension but as you often do we found some stuff that needed to be corrected on the back end of the frame so last week I spent this time that took to actually correct the problem with the c-notch that we did there got it fully boxed in fully welded up and reinforced and now we can basically do the rear suspension install which we should have started from this point last week but hey that's all right I'm more than willing and happy to take the time to make something right. That's my mantra. If you guys haven't figured it out already, I don't care how much time it takes you, if you touch it, or if you see something that is just absolutely horrendous, it's up to you to take the time to make it right. I don't care how long it takes, do it right. Don't cut corners. Anyway, um, little sermon aside, we are going to start by finishing the framework, which now, like I said, this is basically a fresh install or a fresh slate, if you will. Um, we're doing a shock relocation, so that mount is going to get chopped off simply because there's no sense to leave that bracket there. This shock mount is getting chopped off. We're putting some atomic fabrication mounts back here. And then on the axle, we have to do the same thing, chop off the factory lower shock mounts there and there. And then we're welding on the stuff here from atomic fabrication and performance. Links will be down below in the description. And then once we have that done, we'll get a little bit of paint on the frame in the areas that we're going to be welding. And then we will install the cal tracks, which basically means we need to press out those two rubber bushings in the front of the leaf springs and replace them with, I think they're out, these aluminum sleeves and all that stuff. So by the end of today's video, if all goes according to plan, everything on that table will be installed on the truck. The wheels will be on it. It'll be sitting on the ground and it'll be done and out of my hair which not that I mind that because I really like this truck, but my goal is to get it done this week. So let's begin. Before we get to the action, I wanted to take a quick second to talk to you about the sponsor of today's video, which is Solder Stick. They make wiring connectors that'll save you time and money and they'll make quick and permanent connections when you're trying to join two wires together. My favorite product is their 500 piece wiring connector kit and they have a variety of sizes in here. It ranges from 26 gauge on the small end all the way up to 10 gauge on the large end. Um, and it's pretty neat how they work. As you can see on the inside here, there's basically some heat shrink tube on the outside and then in the center, there's a little ring of solder. So all you do is strip the ends of your wire, slide them inside the solder stick connector and apply a little bit of heat, whether it's from like a candle or a heat gun or a lighter or a torch, or maybe you can rub two sticks together. I don't know, but either way, if you can heat that solder up just enough, it's going to melt in and create that permanent long lasting connection between the wires and the heat shrink tube is going to create a weather tight seal. So you have no worries about corrosion or anything like that. Uh, they also have a similar setup with their ring connectors, a um, couple different sizes here with heat shrink on the end. Um, again, because you don't want to have moisture or dirt getting inside your wiring connectors. Um, so if you want to pick one of these up for yourself, which, I mean, if you do any sort of wiring, you definitely should, check out solderstick.com and use the code LT20 when you check out. That'll save you 20% off your order, and they got some pretty awesome stuff. Solderstick.com, use the code LT20. Why go through the effort of chopping off a bracket that no one will ever see other than you guys? Well, this is the way.
So the way these work, we've got an aluminum bushing that presses. Uh oh. That doesn't work. All right, so the UPS man came through earlier with the new bushing. So now all we got to do is get this squished in there and we're back in business. You know, I say this every time I put cow tracks in, but if you beat this thing in with a hammer, that center sleeve is not going to fit right. All right, guys, finally, this is the moment that I've been waiting for. We're ready to put the axle back underneath the truck. Not for good, mind you, because I still have to do some final welding, but electricians are here. Um, still gonna do a little bit of final welding, but this will let me get the spring purchase tacked in place once I set the pinion angle. Also let me get the shock mounts tacked in place. I just gotta adjust the angle, but here we are, guys. The axle is sort of sitting in position. Um, Got the Caltrack bushings pressed in the front of both leaf springs. Frame is reinforced, painted, plated, and we're nearing the end of this job. So I'm excited. Let's get this thing in. To simulate the weight of a bed approximately. Um, I did take some measurements so I know what the ride height was before and we got some guys here so hop on up. All right there's one, there's two, all right so yeah possibly because we were actually no that's that's about right because we were an inch above that with the bed on the truck. I don't think I saw the move when I got on. <laughs> All right, so if you didn't catch what was just going on, we were setting the pinion angle uh, because we are now going to be welding the axle purchase to the axle tube like they should be instead of just relying on the pressure from the U-bolt. Um, but anyway, we need to make sure that the angle is correct between the engine, the drive line, and the rear differential. Uh, before we had, page number two, before we had the engine going downhill about four degrees, the drive shaft angle going downhill by 0.9 degrees, and the uh, differential was going uphill from front to back, which means these two angles weren't correct. Um, we kind of want to have the differential and the engine running more or less parallel, but with the diff just a little bit downhill because as you accelerate, the differential will want to kind of climb up. Basically, the pinion gear right there, that guy is trying to climb the ring gear and go up. So if we matched the angles exactly at right height, under acceleration, it would go a little bit too far, which we don't want to have happen. So we'll run it about two degrees, a degree and a half less. So that way under acceleration, it'll climb 
and be roughly neutral. That's the best recipe that I found. So anyway, um, we put the guys on the back to kind of simulate the weight of the bed and the fuel tank because you want to set the pinion angle at ride height, of course. Um, and that way we don't have to bolt the fuel tank in the bed in place. We just got a couple of guys. So I have the U-bolts now tightened up. I'm just going to put a couple of tack welds on there. And then we're going to kind of do the same thing with the shocks. I'll get the shock mounted about with about 40% of the travel remaining for compression and 60% remaining for extension. And then we'll basically put the lower brackets on, tack weld them in place. And then all we gotta do is pull the axle out one final time, fully weld everything, the brackets and the spring or axle perches. And then this truck can go together for good. All right, the last thing that we need to do is weld the shock brackets onto the axle. Um, I have the shock at 45% travel exposed for compression, which means we have 55% available for extension, which is roughly where you wanna have these things set up, especially because generally vehicles have more up travel than compression. Um, and on a vehicle with Caltrax, when this thing launches, technically the rear end should separate or push away or extend from the frame. So anyway, that's where we're setting them. So we'll get the, we did our little math here. You can see total travel of the shop, 5.6 inches, 45% is two and a half inches exposed, which is exactly what we have. Yada, yada, yada. Got the shocks cranked all the way uh, tight right now, just so that won't move. And then we'll get that welded on the frame. Simple as that. You guys might not be able to see what I'm doing, but I am just now matching the angle from side to side. So we're now at my favorite part of the project because all the cutting, all the grinding, all the welding, the sweeping, the painting, all the cleanup pretty much is done and now all we have to do is bolt everything back together. Um, I love doing fabrication work, don't get me wrong, but the one thing I can't stand about is just that smell, kind of like you get it in your sinuses, it makes everything taste funny for the next day, just that weird metallic taste. I, I don't love that and I don't love all the grit and stuff, you know, that kind of gets on the floor as you as you cut and stuff. But anyway, now it's all cleaned up and we're ready to put this thing back together and get the truck down the road because I get to work on my truck next. So really excited. Anyway, um, this is kind of the finished product. We started with a frame that needed to be patched up and we patched it up. We got everything painted. We relocated the shock brackets. We cut off the unnecessary stuff we didn't need. One shock bracket, basically. Have the axle fully prepped, fully welded. It's painted, not completely. I. You know, if I had a couple more weeks with this truck, I'd probably take the time to like, you know, paint everything, but I just don't have the time to do that. And that's kind of outside the scope of what I've been assigned to do by the customer. But anyway, um, got everything painted, ready to go, got the brake lines attached. So uh, let's do it. Let's get it put back together.
All right, I breezed through most of the installation in terms of filming, and I think you guys probably saw the big chunks go back into place. But finally, we're done. Well, not done because we could put the bed on, do the alignment, and just the cal tracks. But framework suspension work is 100% complete. Everything is back together, torqued down to spec. We got all the wires routed neatly where they belong, allowed, you know, stuff like the brake hose to flex like it should without binding up. Uh, fuel tank's back in. We just started it up. We bled the brakes because we had the uh, brake lines disconnected, torqued the tires down, torqued every single suspension component. Um, so yeah, major milestone complete. Now let's throw the bed on. I'll do the alignment real quick. I'll maybe go for a quick test drive, but it is Thursday at noon. It is, well, 12.05 if you can read our handy dandy wall clock. Um, and the customer is gonna be here tomorrow morning to pick it up. So, got the rest of the day to finish it. Shouldn't be a problem though. thing we are doing is adjusting those cow tracks and as you can see I have Nick sitting in the seat to represent the driver. Now we'll just make sure that we have the tiniest bit of preload on the roller which you guys probably can't see but basically I'm going to lengthen that bar until the wheel just barely starts to touch. I should lengthen it not shorten it. Right there, and I'll do the other side. By the way, if you have Caltrax, you need to invest in these wrenches. I bought these for my truck, but they make this adjustment so easy because the regular size boxing wrenches, they just don't fit in here. Alrighty guys, it's Friday morning. It is 7.49 a.m. and this truck is about to leave. The owner's gonna be here any minute now. And as sad as I, I am to see this one go, because it's, well, it's a beautiful truck and I had fun working on it, it is time to move on to another project, which is my own truck, which I'm really excited about. Um, and someday I hope my truck can look as cool as this one, but um, yeah guys, that's what it takes to install the suspension. This was a fun project. Next up, we have this guy coming in. Uh, we're doing a cam swap. We're doing, hopefully, the Holly EFI if my harness gets here in time. Uh, valve springs, the motor's coming out. We're gonna reseal it, because this thing leaks quite a bit. And we're gonna continue the legacy of the Ugly Truck and the Bone Stock 8.1, which I am really pumped about. So, thank you guys for watching. Come back soon. Have a good one.